Jed, you got to do something about that young and the urine. How'd that happen? Fighting with a bobcat. Get hurt? I reckon so. It went limping off on three legs. <laughs> I swear I don't know what I'm going to do about that girl. <laughs> well, the first thing to do is to get her into a dress. She's getting too big to be wearing man's duds. Looky here. She's done popped the buttons off of her shirt again. Well, Ellie May carries herself proud with her shoulders thrown back. It ain't her shoulders that's popping these buttons. <laughs> Fully grown up, rounded out, female woman. Time to start acting like one. Well, one of these days, some boy will come along and start courting her. And... They came courting when she was 12. What did she do? She whopped the tar out of them. Well, it ain't fitting. Girl running around as wild as a cougar, wrestling, fighting, and hunting. She ought to be doing woman's work. Happen me with the steel. Yeah. Well, I'll speak to her. Oh, that reminds me. Better go down and stomp out the fire under that mess. Uh, hold on now, Granny. You ain't gonna stomp out no fire like that, are you? Huh? Oh, of course not. Don't want to burn my shoes. Huh? <laughs> Manny, somebody open the door. Howdy, Paul. What you got there? Stranger. Where'd you get him? I think him with a rock. Sure. He was skulking around down by the sloop. Figured he might be a revenue. He ain't no revenue. Then can I keep him? Of course not. Well, I called him. Doesn't matter. Well, he won't be no trouble. I could keep him out in the smokehouse. Well, Ellie May, you can't keep people like they were dogs and cats. Ooh. 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 That's hard. <laughs> Who's that? Some feller Ellie found nosing around. Beaming with the rocks would be easier to tote. They are fellas from the petroleum company. What's a petroleum? I don't know. He asked me if he could do some wildcatting down by the slough. I said, help yourself. We're glad to get rid of the critters. What he said? Just kind of laughed. The last on him, there ain't no wildcats down there at that slough. <laughs> no, it's too full of oil. Oh. Oh. What happened? Well, I... This here is the Clampett place. I'm Jed Clampett, my young and Ellie May, and Granny. Granny says you've been doing some wildcatting. There's no need to. Mr. Clampett, that swamp of yours is full of oil. I could have told you that. Well, my company would like to pump it out. Yeah, I'd like that too, but I just can't afford to have it done. <laughs> oh, no, no, you don't understand. You see, you wouldn't have to pay for it. Oh, I don't take favors from strangers. No, 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 Mr. Clampett, you see, uh, you're a very rich man. How big a rock did you bean him with? No bigger than a hedge apple. Uh, listen, I've got to call my office in Tulsa. Have you got a telephone? A what? A telephone? Well, maybe one of your neighbors has one. It's a, uh, well, down in this country, it's probably a box attached to the wall. And, uh... Uh, you talk into it, and they can hear you in Tulsa. Maybe you'd better sit down for a spell. <laughs> oh, I haven't time. Listen, where's the nearest airfield? Airfield? You know, Granny, that's uh, one of them airfields sets up in the air. <laughs> oh, never mind. I'll find it myself. Listen, now don't you sell that swamp till you hear from me. I'm flying to Tulsa. Now he thinks he's got wings. <laughs> Morning, Granny. Watch them buttons, child. <laughs> Granny! Them pigs of yours got into the corn. Did they drink much? <laughs> 
I reckon they did. This here little fellow was kicking blue blazers out of the mule. That's the trouble with Razorbacks. They such a mean drunk. <laughs> if you'd stay in the house where you belong. <laughs> there it is, Mr. Brewster. On the tests and surveys, I'd say that's going to be one of the richest pools since East Texas. News like this is bound to get out. Let's go down and get Pappet's name on a deal. What just flew over Blueberry Ridge? What? The dad blamed this biggest bird you ever laid eyes on. Well, he just overrode Chicken Hawk. Chicken Hawk, nothing. That thing could make off of the hog. Hurry up, put that gun together. No room to land near the cabin, Mr. Brewster. It's too rocky and hilly. Then let's get the sling ready to be lowered. Well, Mr. Brewster, that might be dangerous. Hang the danger. We're going to be the first oil company down there if it kills you. <laughs> Me? Don't worry. If it's safe, I'll follow you. <laughs> Granny, I say it. There it is. Land of mercy. Look at that. What you doing, Granny? That thing's only got one claw, but dang if it ain't grabbed up a man. <laughs> Hurry, Paul. It's my stranger. Where is it? Just flew over the house. I'll give it on the other side. <laughs> You kill it, Granny? No, but I made it drop that stranger. said he'd bring the money later. But how much they going to pay you? Well, uh, he said that depends some on how much oil they could pump out. Well, he must have mentioned some figure. What was it? Well, now, Curly, you know that old swamp one where it shucks. Jed, Clampett, you got slicked and you're ashamed to admit it. That's just what I told you. Granny, how much they going to pay him? All right, I'll tell you. He said it runs somewhere between 25 and 100. 25 and 100? I know it don't sound like much, but Mr. Brewster seemed to set great store by the fact he's going to pay me in some new kind of dollars. There ain't no new kind of dollars. Well, it's new to me. I've heard of gold dollars, silver dollars, paper dollars, but he says he's going to pay me in, uh, what do you call them, Granny? Million dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Million dollars? <laughs> The whole thing out on this piece of paper. Here you can see for yourself. Yeah, I don't know nothing about that guy. Let's see here now. Thanks in heaven. <coughs> Granny, give me the jug. It's empty, but I'll fit some. I'll go, Granny. Jay. Jay. You're a millionaire. A millionaire. Yeah, that's what that Brewster fella kept calling me. I didn't know just how to take it. He meant you're rich. Me? The richest man in these hills. Maybe in the whole state. 
Oh, Janet, you can have anything you want. Do anything you want. Go any place you want. Yeah, that's another thing he kept saying. He said he reckoned I'd be moving away from here soon. What do you think, Pearl? You think I ought to move? <laughs> Jed, how can you even ask? Look around you. You're eight miles from your nearest neighbor. You're overrun with skunks, possums, coyotes, bobcats. You use kerosene lamps for light. You cook on a wood stove summer and winter. You're drinking homemade moonshine, washing with homemade lye soap. And your bathroom is 50 feet from the house and you ask, should you move? Yeah, I reckon you're right. Man, be a dang fool to leave all this. <laughs> oh, there you are, Jed. You misunderstood me. I meant you should move away. And you know where I'd go if I was you? Where? California. California? Yes, sir. Beverly Hills, California. <laughs> Jed, remember the time that your pa took us to Eureka Springs to see the movie picture? Yeah. Well, the actors that make their movie pictures live in Beverly Hills. Go on. Yes, sir. Well. Doggy. Isn't that something? Living in the same neck of the woods with old town me. It sure would. And we could come visit you. <laughs> you know what else they say about California? What? It don't get cold out there. What don't get cold out there? Nothing don't get cold out there. They don't have no snow or no ice. Can't they bring some in? <laughs> I don't want it. That's why I'd be so good for Granny. Remember last winter when she slipped on the ice and broke her hip? Yeah, poor old woman. She was limping for two days. <laughs> well, that couldn't happen in California because they don't have no ice. How come? I don't know how come. But Granny'd sure like it, and we could visit you. <laughs> You know what else they say about California? Maybe Jethro know how come there's no eyes. He's going to school. We could ask him. <laughs> Jethro? Yeah, Ma? Come on over here. Speaking of school, Ellie May could get herself a fine education out there in Beverly Hills. Yeah, Ma? Your rich uncle's got a question he'd like to ask you. <laughs> what rich uncle, Ma? <laughs> Your rich uncle, Jade. Jethro, how come there's no ice in California? Don't look at me. I didn't take it. <laughs> you big dumb. Well, I didn't, Ma. Oh, get out of here. Well, you always do. I don't know. I didn't mean it. I was saying, Jed, folks claim California's got it all beat. Why, things grow twice as big out there. Jethro would be a whopper, wouldn't he? <laughs> He could help you move. He's awful handy at lifting and toting, and he could drive you out in my truck. I tell you what, Pearl. I'm going to have to study on this. When that Brewster fella comes back, I'll ask him what he thinks. Well, your cousin is right about that, Mr. Clampett. Beverly Hills is a choice residential area, and lots of millionaires do settle there. Folks like me, huh? <laughs> well, uh... Millionaires. <laughs> and movie stars, too. Oh, yes, yes. Is Tom Mix there? No. I'm afraid Mr. Mix is dead. Oh? Oh, yeah. What's the matter with me? Remember, Pearl, he got shot at the end of that picture. <laughs> well, there are plenty of other movie stars, and that's where Jed wants to live. Ain't it, Jed? <laughs> I do like the notion of living in the hill. Never could stand flat country. Mr. Clampett, I, I think it only fair. Uh, that is, well, I think you may have a wrong idea about Beverly Hills. Is that where you live? Uh, no, my home is in Tulsa. Well, see, maybe you can get us a place there in your neighborhood. <laughs> Mr. Clampett, let's not beat around the bush. You will love Beverly Hills. 
Then that's it. Can you steer Jade onto a good place? No, oh, I can get the bank out there to handle it for him. He'd like a nice big place with plenty of room for his kinfolk to visit him. <laughs> like a nice roomy place if I could afford it. Oh, Mr. Clappett, with your money you can afford the Taj Mahal. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> well, no, you see, I, I was just making a little joke. Oh, well, uh, go right ahead. <laughs> well, you see, uh, the Taj Mahal is in India. <laughs> Nice fella, but I've heard better jokes. Is the foreigner staying to supper? I'm ashamed to say I ain't asked him. How about it? Oh, I, I don't think so. Oh, no trouble. What you cooking tonight, Granny? Mustard greens and possum innards. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that, Mr. Brewster? Very clearly. Want to change your mind? Uh... Not this time. Well, if you should happen to come back tomorrow, we'll be having leftovers. That's the thing about possum innards. He's just as good as second day. <laughs> Ellie, if old Duke sits there with you, there ain't gonna be room for Granny. Oh, that's all right, Paul. Granny ain't gone. Who says she ain't? She says she ain't. That's right, Uncle Jed. She's just sitting on the back porch in her rocker, and she says that's as close to California as you're going to get her. <laughs> we'll see about that. Thank if I ain't got me the muliest women for. We ain't never going to get there. Now, what's all this nonsense about you ain't going to California? Ain't no license to it. If the good Lord had wanted me in California, he'd have put me in California. Maybe he's just getting around to it. The book says he moves in mysterious ways. Well, if he moves me, I'll go. But you and Big Jethro ain't a budging me. Granny, <laughs> this your Beverly Hills sounds like the kind of place you'd like. That Britcher fella says they got smogs out there. What's a smog? Well, me and Jethro figured out that's, uh... Small hog. <laughs> and you heard what Pearl said. It, he ain't got no snow on, fella. He's bought us a house in them Beverly Hills. He's in there 25 million to the out there. Well, you just chase on out after it. I'm staying right here. And I ain't afeard, neither. <laughs> Granny, I ain't leaving you here alone. And I ain't a budging out of this rocker. Sign say. It says Beverly Hills. You said that, Granny? We're dying. They call them hills? Why, we got moles that can push up higher ridges than that. Well, these ways, these hills will be among our kind of folks. <laughs> of $25 million to the account of J.D. Clampett. J.D.? As in Rockefeller. <laughs> Elevates us to third position in capital assets and assures our bank of... Come in. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt, Mr. Drysdale. All right, Taylor. Well, are we all set to give the Clampets a red carpet reception? Well, I'm afraid Mrs. Drysdale still isn't too happy, sir. Yes, I know. Oh, my wife is very upset that I got the estate next to ours for the Clampets. Says I don't even know what kind of people they are. Do you? <laughs> I know to the dollar what kind of people they are. They're my kind of people. Loaded. <laughs> Taylor, have the gardeners got the grounds in order? Uh, yes, sir. But I'm afraid that's another thing your wife is upset about. Oh? Well, you see, your gardeners have been working on their lawn all week. Why, they've mowed it, trimmed it, fed it, clipped it. I don't care if they lather it and shave it. <laughs> this is the most beautiful mansion in Beverly Hills. I want every square inch of ground within those walls in apple pie... Oh. Yes? Oh, hello, Margaret. 
No, dear, I'm very bit. What? Well, good heavens, did you call the police? I'll be right there. What happened? The Clavitt estate is being invaded by a band of outlaws. Invaded? Yes, they're holding the gardeners at gunpoint. <laughs> Sure is lucky we'd come along and we did. That's the truth. The way they were slipping through that gate, another five minutes and that whole darn prison would have been empty. Jethro, <laughs> you sure that's a prison? Yeah, Uncle Jed. I seen pictures. <laughs> Only thing is, how come there ain't no guards on them walls? Well, probably done them in with them knives and things. <laughs> These killers if I ever did see any. Fine neighborhood he's moving into. <laughs> you hear that? Hot dig there's bobcats in these hills. <laughs> I'm sorry. Somebody's called the law. I reckon he's gonna be mighty grateful for what we done. <laughs> Folks out here has got a strange way of showing his grateful. <laughs> You've locked up one of the richest men in the country. Mr. Clavett, I don't know how to apologize. I am deeply humiliated. What have you got throat stung with J.D. Clampett? I'm Jed Clampett, and I'd appreciate it if you'd let go of my Sunday shirt. <laughs> You're J.D. Clampett, the oil millionaire? Yep. This here is my nephew, Jethro. Howdy. Quickly, man, unlock this cell. <laughs> Mr. Clampett. On behalf of the entire city of Beverly Hills, I extend our deep and humble apologies for this unfortunate and embarrassing incident. Oh, I'm Lubin Drysdale, president of the Commerce Bank of Beverly Hills. My car is waiting to take you and your family to your new home. We want you to know how happy we are to have you, your handsome nephew, your lovely daughter, and your beautiful money, mother. <laughs> Wait a minute! Stop this car! Mr. Brysdale, you, you tricked us. You just took us out of jail so you could bring us back up here to prison. Head for the hills, everybody! Oh, wait! 